Skateboards are the all-time coolest thing for every generation of people. And when it comes to electric boards, it becomes even cooler. Didn't you see Casey Neistat's Aladdin Magic Carpet prank? What a cool prank that was, and nobody could think that carpet was actually run by an electric skateboard. Every person who watched Jesse flying on the streets of New York asked what he was riding. It was so easy and smooth to ride that people were too curious to know the brand and wondered why they didn't know about that. That was none other than Boosted, a company that is well known for its electric skateboards. And with Casey Neistat, many other popular YouTubers like Marquez Brownlee, Sam Sheffer, Matty Hapuja had also reviewed the Boosted boards, which eventually created a craze for Boosted and skateboard lovers. Not only that, the idea of these electric skateboards was so amazing and well accepted those times that Boosted got many investments and backups to become an apple of electronic skateboards with multi-million capital and become a popular brand among skateboards industry. But unfortunately, these wonderful Boosted boards are now going out of business and people are going to be deprived of these revolutionary skateboards soon. Wondering why? Let's check it out. It all started in the late 40s and 50s when the very first skateboard was invented. Who invented it? No one knows. But it was certain that these sidewalk surfers were mostly invented by the California wave riders who were looking for a way to surf on land in slow waves. And that early sidewalk surfer made with metal roller skates and planks of wood is today's stylish skateboards that are used as fast personal transport vehicles. Fast because it comes with electric motors nowadays, which increase the personal commute speed to another level. However, you will be surprised to know that the first motorized skateboards were not powered by rechargeable batteries or electric motors. On the contrary, it was fueled by gasoline, and whoever was interested in motorized skateboards used to make it in their own garage. DIY facts! But this era of DIY was about to end in 1975 by a man from Berkeley, California. Jim Rogroden, a man who created a two-stroke motorboard that runs on urethane wheels and gasoline. However, this prototype of Jim Rogroden catches the eye of Bill Posey, an onlooking entrepreneur, and decided to mass produce the skateboards under the company Motoboard International. For the first time in history, motorized skateboards came on the market for sale. And Motoboard even was the first to switch out the old hard steel skate wheels with polyurethane ones. But their revolutionary start was about to end very fast as the state of California made the decision to ban gasoline-fueled skateboards in 1977. After that, skateboard enthusiasts again looked for ways to motorize their skateboards, but failed. Finally, in 1999, another skateboard revolution came off. Lewis Finkel, also known as Electric Lewis, filed a patent in California for his wireless electric skateboard design, which he created in 1997. In his design, Lewis decided to merge the longboard, motor, and wireless remote into one entity. Those wireless remotes used to work the rider's trigger finger came into contact with a metal strip and transferred a low-frequency signal to the feet to the board's receiver. With that, the Frinkles board used to propel and hit speeds up to 22 miles per hour in only four seconds. Cool, right? But sadly, not everyone got the chance to ride those wireless skates as Frinkle charged $995 for each of his boards. But in just a few years, things were about to change. A technology was developed in 2004 where rechargeable batteries could transport an adult rider securely and efficiently. This was a technology that had written the future of Kickstarter's two rising companies, Boosted and Marble. Both companies took part in creating the new generation of electric skateboards and got a huge investment from hundreds of backers. But the one name that had taken the hearts of skateboard enthusiasts that time was Boosted. The idea of creating Boosted came out of the minds of three Stanford grads, Sanjay Dastur, Matthew Tran, and John Ullman. They wanted to create an electric skateboard that will be portable, lightweight, 
and easy to use. That was so incredible and well received that time. They got back with the Stanford Incubator Program in 2012. After that, they had also announced a Kickstarter campaign for boosted boards and set a goal at $100,000. That campaign was a resounding success and reached their goal in just 24 hours, garnering nearly $500,000. And with that, they had also graduated from the Y Combinator program and gathered more investment for their boosted skates. Now as they had so many investments and admiration for their e-board idea, it was a Stan grad's time to stand on the people's expectations. And without letting anyone down, Boosted launched its first three products, the Single, the Dual, and the Dual Plus boards in 2014. The Dual Plus boards were the original models of Boosted boards, and the Single and Dual one was the upgraded version of that. Those models had one or two motors under the deck and varied in range, power, and of course, price. Though the boards were charging nearly $1,000, people still bought Boosted and loved the outstanding quality and attention to detail. It was an immediate success for Boosted at the start and got a cult-like status from the writing groups, Reddit threads, and YouTube channels. And the one YouTube star who was thoroughly obsessed with the Boosted boards was Casey Neistat. It's not the Aladdin prank. Almost every video of Neistat, evidence of Boosted boards was seen always. It can be said that most of the Boosted success was pushed by Casey Neistat. Even after that Aladdin prank, Boosted got 300% increased searches only for Casey Neistat. And the Boosted boards became so popular that the startup was getting tired of completing the orders that were pouring in. However, with keeping up with the existing orders, Boosted also announced its second generation of Boosted board in May 2016. The second generation e-boards had swappable batteries, 80 millimeter orangutan wheels, upgraded Bluetooth radio, accessory ports, and a more modular design. But while they were about to garner admiration for their second generation of boosted boards, bumps appeared. An avid boosted user, Rick Bross, reported that his board spread out some sort of smoke. The smoke was too intense to block the visibility of his room and he eventually could smell the chemical lithium and melting plastic there. As he didn't want to breathe whatever it was the board was smoking, he put on a gas mask to block the gas. Also, Bross had posted to the Booster Board Reddit page to inform the company and fans about the incident he went through. Seeing that, Boosted immediately contacted Rick Bross and offered him spare parts in exchange for damaged ones. Even the boosted CEO, Sanjay Dastur, flew from California to New York to meet Bross and analyze the damaged board. But that didn't stop there. Another boosted user reported a smoking battery and was forced to issue a recall for their boosted boards. It told the users to stop using the boards and to disconnect the batteries. As Dastur recognized the problem was occurring from their own quality control standard, he stopped the production of November-December 2016 and hoped to restart the production in January of 2017 with better batteries and firmware. Though they were able to re-release the second generation of Boosted in February 2017, and things didn't go well for Boosted again. As a result, in mid-2017, CEO Sanjay Dastur handed over the company to another Stanford grad, Jeff Rusikow. At this era of Jeff Rusikow, Boosted was able to buckle up again and launch their third generation of Boosted boards with a mini board and a high performance variant called Stealth. Interestingly, this was Boosted's biggest hit in history, and Jeff was able to raise nearly an $80 million investment by the end of 2018 from Kosla Venture and others. With the money raised, Jeff decided to expand the brand into more than 30 countries. By 2019, Rusakow's effort to grow the company appeared to be working, but Boosted needed more money. And adding to the crisis, then-President Donald Trump's trade war with China appeared to be a big problem as Boosted used to outsource manufacturing from China from the start. Even the Rusakow's interview to The Verge said that the company had the financial ability to eat the tariff on the skateboards, but the tariffs also turned out to be another disaster for Boosted. And to triple things up, Boosted first ever electric scooter Boosted Rev came onto the line in early 2019. This was the startup's super rugged and most expensive product costing $1,600. But the remaining liquid was not enough to face all these problems together. 
So in May 2019, Boosted quietly took a loan of $18.5 million using its assets as collateral. But for this sinking situation, Boosted eventually lost their biggest investor, Kosla Venture, and started laying off their employees to cut off costs. However, no tricks Jeff worked to make Boosted successful again and failed to pay back the loan. So in March 2020, Boosted transferred the authority of collateral assets to the venture debt firm, and some of the assets were acquired by Lime, including five of the company's core patents. And the remaining inventory of skateboards, scooters, and related parts was acquired by Brian Schwartz, Boosted's first California dealer. And now running a newly formed Boosted USA company with the remaining goods of revolutionary boards. Now, as the original Boosted has stopped working, it can be said that the eras of revolutionary Boosted boards are about to end. Though Brian Schwartz is working hard to support the remaining Boosted community and run the business as long as possible, that's not going to revive the company again.